people from our church to be here. Grace Baptist Church in Hazelhurst, Georgia. Amen. Y'all supposed to start screaming and cheering right there. Amen. But I appreciate them coming. We had uh, uh, a lot of our adults drove up and brought a, brought some kids up, and I appreciate them coming so far. And what a wonderful church we have, and God's blessed us. And uh, I don't know why they wanted me for pastor, as good as people as they are. They deserve better, but I'm sure thankful and glad and proud to be their pastor. And I appreciate Brother Wayne. He's been a blessing and a friend to me for a long time. When I first met Brother Wayne, he'd walk in a room and I'd smile. Now I've known him all these years. He walks in a room and I laugh out loud. <laughs> anyway, Mark chapter 4. Amen. Boy, hadn't it been good this weekend? Good preaching. Last couple of nights, boy, that fellow last night done some preaching and uh, it sure was good. And uh, I just want to be led of the Lord this morning. I'm going to try not to keep you real long. I preach on a very real common thought that you've heard preached, I'm sure. I'm not going to preach something you've never heard or thought you've never thought of. I'm sure your pastor's preached along these lines and tried to help you. And I'm sure that uh, I'm not going to preach some deep theological thought you never thought of. But it might just reinforce some things you already know. Maybe it'll help you. Amen, hopefully. And uh, it kind of goes along with It's kind of uh, interesting, the song they just sung. Uh, but that's kind of along the lines I'm going to preach this morning. I had something else in mind, but the Lord just kind of laid this on my heart just a few minutes ago. And I want to read in Mark chapter number 4. And let's start reading about verse number 35. Verse number 35, In the same day when the even was come, He saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. He was in the hinder part of the ship, and asleep on a pillar. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Amen. I want to preach on a simple thought for a few minutes this morning. The storms of life. The storms of life. I've already said it this way before, and I've said it over and over and over, and I'm sure your preacher has. That if you're here this morning, you're saved, you're, uh, there's three things. Either you're going into a storm, or you're coming out of a storm, or maybe you're just right in the middle of one. Amen? The storms of life are going to come. Amen? There's no way around it. Matter of fact, the Bible said, Job said, man is born of a woman, it's but a few days and full of trouble. Job even said this, he said, man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. He said, it's coming. It's going to happen. You say, preacher, I didn't come here this morning to hear that depressing stuff. It may be depressing, but it's true. It all started back in Genesis chapter 3 many years ago when Adam and Eve fell. A man fell from fellowship with God and sin came on the human race. And man's had trouble ever since. Matter of fact, Adam and Eve's kids were born. Their first two boys were born. One ended up murdering the other one. Amen. The first family had murder in their blood after they sinned and fell from God. But I'm here to tell you this morning, their storms are going to come. I've been, I've been in this thing for about 30 years. I'm, I know I look a lot younger than Brother Wayne does. He looks like he's about 70 or 80, but I, me, he's about the same age. He's a little older than me. But uh, in, those, in my 51 short years in this world, I've been through a few storms. And storms can be scary. You ever been through a tornado? We went through one at camp here back this summer. Uh, we come up here, Brother Wayne went to camp, and got us, they got us in a tornado, about got us killed. Uh, but you know, it's kind of scary. Storms can be a scary thing. I'll never forget that camp, boy. I tell you, uh, we had a bunch of kids in there. We had over 100 people, I think. And, uh, and, and the lights went out, and the storms started coming, and people was walking around in palm pilots and seeing where the storm was coming through. And we all started getting up under tables, and, and those people praying had never prayed in their life. Amen. Brother Sam, uh, my deacon, there he is with us. He's up on the table. He's confessing sins he's never even committed. He's making up stuff. 
Hey, he said, God, I didn't do this, but I'm going to confess it. Help us get out of it. Help us get out of this life. And you know what? Really, I mean, I wasn't really scared, scared, but there was a few minutes there that it, that you really, really, you felt fear come over you. Not not panic, really, as much as it was. You know what? This could be it. We may not make it out of this thing. I'm serious. It was bad. I'm sure the preachers told you about it. And the hail came down. The winds blew. And I tell you what, it was it was an eerie sight. I mean, we was walking around just a little bit, and it was getting just about dark outside, and you could see all them kids up on them tables, and you could see them on their hands and knees, and they were crying, and they were just shaking all over. And these ladies was down on the tables with them, and had to have their arms around them, and my kids, and brother brother Wayne's kids, and, and all of the older kids had the little kids wrapped up, kids they didn't even know, never even met them, and they was holding them and hugging them, and saying, Jesus is going to help us get through this. I tell you what, that was a storm, brother. That can be a scary thing. And life is full of those things. They're going to come. You might as well brace yourself. You might as well get ready. You might as well prepare yourself. Whether it be sickness or financial trouble or marital problems or church trouble or whatever it is, you're going to have trouble. You're going to have storms. There could be a storm on the horizon. It could be coming around the next curve. As the preacher said this morning, everything could be peaches and cream. And you could be just as happy. Everything going your way. And the next day, but I'll tell you, the storm of the century could rip right through your life. I'll show you a few things this morning about this storm, and I'll let you go. Things about the storms of life. Number one, verse 37. Look at verse 37. I want to say this. The storm was real. The storm was real. Uh, the Bible said there in verse 37, it said this, And there arose a great storm of wind. When we were in that storm the other day, I wasn't really going to talk about this. When we was in that storm there at camp, that wind was about the most scary part of it. It wasn't the rain and hell that scared you. It was the way the wind was making those great big trees just bend down to the ground. And you never heard anything like it. I want to tell you something this morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let's be compassionate, considerate, and thoughtful of others. Listen, there's some of these kids come to church. And you may not realize. You look at them and say, "Well, what's the big deal? They don't have it. They got it made. They don't know what trouble is." Oh, but listen, their little life. It could be the awfulest storm that they've ever gone through. It may not look much, much to you. You may be standing on the shore, but if you're out there in that boat in the middle of that storm, it's very real this morning. I've heard adults say, I don't know what teenagers got to worry about. They got it made. They got to worry about the tail. That may be true, but did you know the number two killer of our young people in America is suicide? The number two reason for death in America is teenagers blowing their own brains out and taking pills and killing themselves. You know why that is? It's because they're in a storm. It may not look like much to you. It may not seem like a lot to me. Oh, but I want to tell you this morning, the storm is real. It's not an imaginary thing. Amen. They said they was having a testimony service one night and, and they asked the people their favorite passage in the Bible. Some people said Romans 8, 28. Some were saying Proverbs chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. And some were saying John 3, 16. And they asked this old black man, he said, what's your favorite scripture? He said, I like that verse that said it came to pass. He said, what in the world is that supposed to mean? He said, it came to pass. He said, well, I'm in the storm of my life. I realize that it came to pass. It came, but it's going to pass. Oh, brother, listen, we in that storm, one thing we got to understand, that it's real, but we just got to hang on. Just hang on for dear life and trust God and have faith He's going to bring us through. Amen. storm was real. Them guys were sailors. They fished for a living. I mean, there wasn't much of sissies. There wasn't much of, wasn't much of queers out there. Like, walking around and you know, flip flops and pink shorts. Oh my goodness, what are they going to do? I mean, that's a real rugged fisherman. They probably stunk and smelled, had fish guts on them. I mean, they knew what it was like to be outdoor, outdoors. And they knew what it's like to be in a storm. It wasn't the first storm they'd ever been in. But I want to tell you something, brother. That storm was real. It had panic and stricken their hearts. The storm will be real. So you might be here this morning. Just look. You know what I noticed about the ministry, of Brother Wayne, is sometimes you can look at people and everything can seem fine on the surface. 
And then when all hell breaks loose, or when the bomb goes off, or when the storm hits, sometimes you look at people and say, I had no idea that there was going through that. I had no idea it was that bad. I've talked to people before. I remember talking to a couple, a lady that her husband had left her for a young woman. I remember her sitting at our place of business one day and looked at us, not a tear in her eyes. She said, Preacher, she said, I don't feel anything anymore. She said, I'm just kind of numb inside. You know what she was saying? She said, the storm has ripped through my life. It's torn me apart. And it's very real this morning. The storm's real. Number two, the same verse, the boat was full. You ever felt this way before? You ever said, my boat's full. I took all I can take. You ever felt that way? I had one of my deacons come to me one time. He said, preacher, kind of had a speech in front of me. He said, preacher, I know the Bible says, Lord, we won't put no more than you can bear. He said, I don't know if he knows how much I can take. I said, brother, he knows. He knows! He knows how much you can take. I want to tell you something, brother. The Bible said the boat was full. Now, if you've got a good King James Bible, it said the boat was full. I believe if you'd have put another teaspoon of water on that boat, she'd have sunk. You might be here this morning, you might say, my boat's full. I took all I can take. One more ounce of water I'm going down. Could I tell you something this morning? The storm is real, and the boat may be full. But you don't have to go down. There's been times in my life I've been through a few storms. Maybe not as bad as some people, but I've been through a few real rough ones, a couple. I remember a couple of times, Brother Wayne, in my life, as a preacher, as a pastor, I've looked at my wife riding down the road, and I've said, I don't know if we're going to make it through this one or not. Have you ever done that? Brother Wayne, you ever felt that way? You ever felt like this is it? This is the one. This is the one that's going to take me down. This is the one I'm going to go down with. I can't take it. I'm just not able to do it. But could I tell you something? Look in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. Verse number 13 says this. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. You know what that verse means? It means it's common to man. You ain't the first one. This ain't the first storm that's ever come. This won't be the last storm that's ever come. I want to tell you it's common. It's an everyday occurrence. You ain't the only one. Don't bail out and don't, don't shipwreck, don't give up. It happens all the time. Amen? I see it in a lot of young preachers, pastor churches, and go through a church wreck, and boy, that's terrible. And what they don't understand a lot of times is it's happened so many times. It's happened in the past. It'll happen in the future. It'll happen again. Listen, what I'm trying to say is the Bible said there's no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. But the next part said, but God is faithful. But God is faithful. But God is faithful. Did you hear what he said? It's common to man. It's going to happen. You say, preacher, I don't like the sound of that. You better brace yourself. Listen, you might better put your seatbelt on because we could be going for the ride of our lives. I don't mean to be a pessimist, but I believe our country is in the worst mess it's ever been in. The entire world, it's not just America. We're in a mess, people. And I'll tell you one thing, God's faithful. The Bible said God's faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. Listen, I had a cousin here about 20 years ago. She had a little boy who got sick. Her little boy's about eight years old. He got sick, got a little knot on his neck, and it hurt a little bit. She took him to the doctor and said, I saw out to give him antibody. And she took him back to the doctor a week or so later. It still wasn't better. And it started swelling, getting bigger. Make a long story short, it was leukemia. Two weeks later, he died. Just eight year old kid. I'll never forget this. It's been many years ago. I hadn't been saved long. I hadn't been preaching long. I remember going to the funeral home, and there she sat. There was my cousin and her husband, and, and, and that, was, that was their firstborn son. And they had another little kid at the time, I think, and maybe a baby. I had a, two or three kids. And I remember walking through the receiving line, and people shaking their hands and hugging their necks, and they wasn't sobbing and grief stricken. You know what they said? Somebody said, I don't know how you're able to hold up. And this is what she said. She said, I can't explain it, but God gave me a grace that I never knew existed. She said, listen, when my ship was about to go down, listen, I said, ship ahoy! And God threw out the lifeline and rescued me. She said, the boat was full, but somehow. You know, I've heard people say this, and I've said it. I just couldn't take that. I don't know how to go through it. You could take it. You can take more than you think you can. Our problem is we are, we're comfort oriented and we like our comfort zone and we like things and we don't like to be disorganized and out of, out of our comfort zone. But listen, brother and sister, sometimes those things are going to happen 
And you can take more than you think you can. With the Lord's help. The boat was full, man. Peter, he was he may have run around there and said, All right, you guys, those of you can swim, get ready to swim, those of you you can't, and been nice knowing you. Our boat's full. Storm was real, and the boat was full, number three. Their faith was weak. Look at verse number thirty eight. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. That scripture proves that a preacher is supposed to take a nap on Sunday after he preaches. Preach it, brother. Amen. Go find your place and lay down and take a nap. And brother, the Bible said he's back there and he's resting. That also shows you Jesus wasn't worried about it. You think he didn't know a storm was coming? You think he, Jesus had to tune in to, to channel three to find out when the next storm front's coming in? No. Jesus Christ was God. That nothing was made uh, without him. Everything was made by him. Not anything was made that was made that was not made by him. Amen. And when Jesus laid down on that pillow, he knew why he was asleep. A big storm was going to pass on through, and he went on to sleep. That's like when Lazarus died, he knew he was going to die, and he still stayed where he's at. Amen. Their faith was weak, verse 38. And they wake him and said, Master, carest not that we perish? First Peter 5, 7 said this, Casting all your care on him, for he careth for you. I want to tell you something this morning. Your boat may be full, and it may be going down. That's the scary thing. You ever been in a boat before and it looked like it's sinking? That's scary, man. I had my boys in a fishing boat one time years ago when they were real little. We was fishing over here down below the dam, and they, they heard this sound, this horn sounded. And I just thought, oh, some, you know, I didn't even think nothing about it. I thought it was this one of them goofy girls that plays the trumpet or something, you know. And uh, I had a freak right there. <laughs> and I heard that horn go off to the We was right up against the dam fish, and we was catching a few. And I just had a little old tiny fishing boat, a little John boat with like an eight horsepower or something on it. It wasn't half crank half the time. It needed a tetanus shot it so bad off. And they yank it and pull it and the rope and break and have, I mean, it's a mess. Have to paddle our way up the river and paddle our way back. Anyway, we was up there fishing and them horns were sounding. I was just fishing up storm. One of the boys, Ronnie Jr., he said, "Hey, Daddy, what?" He said, "When that the horn sounds, don't that mean they're getting ready to open them wheels?" I said, "What wheels? If you know they're no wheels open and unleashes, you know, the dam and all stuff, my eyes got about that big. I'm like." Oh my goodness. And I started jerking my rope back time. I, I pulled back the third time and them wheels open and then that big old waves of that old brown ugly water come rolling to me and I was just jerking. And let me tell you something, I didn't mean some praying, brother. I was speaking in tongues and all kinds of stuff. I ain't kidding you. I scared me. That big old wave coming at me and them two little not headed boys sat there looking at me like, Daddy. I mean, I was jerking that thing. And by, it finally cranked right as that big big wave was coming right up behind the boat. And that was a scary thing. And you know what? The only thing I was thinking about at that time was getting out of there and getting out, getting rescued and, and not coming to harm. But listen, there's the, these guys were going down and their faith was weak. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. That your faith won't be tried when you're on the mountaintop and you're shouting and everything's going good. When you're on the mountaintop shouting and everything's going good and the money money's coming in and the bill's paid and everything's helped. Everybody's going good. The devil's just sitting somewhere on a stump sharpening up his toes. He said, go ahead, shout. I don't care. Shout all you want to. Help yourself. But I'll see you about Tuesday morning. You won't be shouting in when you get up to go to work and you got a flat tire and a headache. Kids are late for school and all this crazy business happens. That's all right. Go ahead and shout. I'll see you next week. Right? Amen. And brother, their faith was strong just previous to this. But now that they're in the storm of their life, they begin to question God. Lord, do you even care the mess we're in? When you get in a rough storm, you'll do that. You begin to question God. Lord, do you even know where I'm at? Do you even know what I'm going through? Lord, why are you letting this happen to me? God, I don't understand. It don't make any sense. But could I tell you something this morning? That's the whole essence of what faith is. He said, lean not to thine own understanding. That's what makes faith what it is. You don't understand it. It makes no sense, but you believe it anyway. This don't make sense, Lord. It ain't supposed to make sense. Their faith was weak. Don't dwell on what the devil's doing. Look at what God's doing. Amen? They say that 92% of what you worry about never happens. Do you know we waste, we waste 92% of our time worrying about stuff that ain't even going to happen? And Jesus even confronted that. When He woke up and calmed the storm, He said, What are you so upset about? What is your problem? 
You know what Jesus is? Uh, we're down here on earth walking around, and the Lord's up in heaven. He said, "What? Why are you wasting your time worrying about this stuff that don't even uh, don't even apply to you? That don't, don't have anything to do with you? Hey, why don't you just trust me? You know what I believe? I believe we're going to get to the judgment seat of Christ one of these days, and I believe we're going to look back, and I believe we're going to say, you mean to tell me that I wasted all them years running around worrying and defeated? You mean to tell me I lost my shout over that?" You mean to tell me that I didn't preach because of that little old thing? You mean to tell me that I missed all these blessings? I never went into Canaan land because of those little petty things? That's exactly right. Because the Bible said the just shall live by faith. A lot of people look at the preacher up here preaching and say, Boy, I'd preach if I could if I could get plugged in like that. Most of the time preachers ain't plugged in. They just preach. Amen? Did you know that? Did you know most of the time preachers get up here and preach? It's that way with me. I don't know about him. About every time I get to preach, I don't feel overwhelmed and anointed with the unction. Like that fellow said last night, one of the black preacher fellow said, let's pray for our pastor that he have the unction. Somebody said, what am unction? He said, I don't know, but I know when he don't got it. But you know what? When you don't feel it, you just do it anyway. Because it's the right thing to do. When you go out and knock on doors, it don't make any sense. Nobody comes to the door. And they, when they do, they slam the door in your face and cuss you out and spit on you. No less of, you do it. You don't do it because of results. You do it because God said to do it. Faith was weak. And number four, look at verse 36. Back up a little bit. The storm was real. The boat was full. Their faith was weak. And verse 36 there were others in trouble. Look at verse 36. The latter part of verse and there were also with him other little ships. Here's what I want to point out to you tonight, this morning. These disciples were on a boat. Jesus was with them. They were in the storm of their life. Right? But did you know right out there on that same lake, there were some other boats in the same storm. But they didn't have Jesus on their boat. You follow what I'm saying? Listen, listen. Look at it in the light of Calvary. Look at it in the light of the cross for the Lord Jesus Christ. At least we got Jesus Christ as our helper and our guide and our keeper. He's going to love us and watch over us and take care of us and keep us and supply our every need. What about all these other people in this world that's going through the storm of their life and they don't have the Lord? You know, I preached the funeral just a few weeks ago of a man that had no church affiliation, left no testimony, no nothing. His family had no church affiliation, no pastor, no church family, no nothing. That's pitiful. Heartbreaking. I mean, it's heartbreaking enough not to know where somebody went, but to go to do a funeral and nobody there even knows anybody that goes to church. Nobody even has a, anything that resembles a pastor. I'll tell you something this morning. There's other people in trouble too. But me and you are in the best shape in the world. At least we're in the storm and we're in trouble, but we got somebody that's in charge of all this mess and we got somebody that can calm the storm and he's not going to let us go under it. There were other people. Heard about this fellow one time. He went and had a had his leg amputated. His preacher came to see him. He said, "Brother, I'm awful sorry about your leg." He said, "That's all right, preacher." He said, "I don't have to worry about cutting out that ingrown toenail anymore." See, there's always somebody in worse shape than you are. He said, yeah, "But preacher, our economy and our jobs and, and all that stuff. Well, it could be a lot worse." Could be a lot worse. What if you lived in a godless pagan society? Some of these little kids grow up in these third world countries. All they ever know is hunger and war and rape and slavery and all that stuff. That's all they ever know. They don't know what liberty or freedom even means. There's no debate over the Bible. They've never heard of it. And you and I live in the greatest country in this world. And all we do is complain. I know it's in a mess, but I'll tell you what I'm trying to say. I'd rather be in this storm and know that I'm in the right boat where Jesus is. He ain't going to let us go under. I told my kids the night of our last election, when the results came in, I told my kids, I said, this don't change a thing. I said, we're going to still keep doing what we're doing. We're going to keep on preaching, keep on singing, keep winning souls, keep knocking on doors. This don't change a thing, brother. Hey, we're in a storm. Of course we are. The boat's full. The storm's real. And sometimes even our faith is weak. But I'll tell you one thing. There's others that's in this storm and they need Jesus. Instead of losing our faith, we ought to share Him with those people. Jesus rose and calmed the storm. I'll ask Ronnie and him to come back and get us a verse or two or something real quick. I asked you something this morning. Are you in a storm? You say, preacher, you know who is up at Kings Mountain this summer? 
You know, when them kids up on that table and they were crying and they were praying, boy, we had a good altar call that night too. There's people come to that altar, brother. But did you know the one thing I was thinking about when we were praying, that wind was blowing? It sounded like the top of that building was coming off. The one thing I was thinking about was just making it through that. I thought, if we can just, if we can just make it through. Do you know what they mean when they say weather the storm? You ever heard the old term hunker down? That's when you just hang on, throw the anchor out, and just ride it out, man. Clinch on. Now listen. Listen, you're looking at somebody believes in shouting. Ain't nobody likes it better than I do. I love shouting, running the aisles, and jumping views and all that stuff. But it ain't going to be that way all the time. And when the storms come, and when there's trouble, and there's hardship and heartache, and your heart's broken in two, and you can't feel the presence of God, that's when you just hang on, and you say, God, I'm going to have faith. I know that one of these days, the blessing will come back. But if it don't, I'm still going to worship the blesser. Don't, don't bail out now. The worst thing you can do in a storm is jump out of the boat. Jesus rose in verse 39. And He said, Peace, be still. He went out there on the bow of that boat and He said, Now hush. Be quiet. I'm going to tell you something this morning. He'll still do it in your heart, in your life. In a crowd this big, there's probably somebody sitting here right now. You're coming out of a storm or maybe you're getting ready to go in one. Maybe you're in one right now. You say, Preacher, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe. I've had people sit in my office before and say, Preacher, if I told you what I've been doing, where I've been, you wouldn't believe it. Matter of fact, I can't even believe it. I'm the one doing it. I can't believe it. You ever heard that? And you know what I'm telling you? Even though you're in the storm of your life, and you think you ain't going to make it out, them little kids on them tables, they didn't think it was coming out of there, did they, Brother Sam? They thought this was it. Some of them was crying for their mamas. They was crying. They wanted their mama. It's so pitiful. We're saying, you'll get to see you, Mom. We're coming out of this. We're going to make it out. Storm will pass. All we're trying to tell them to do is just hang on, baby. Just hang on. Don't give up, Christian. Young preacher, bus worker, Sunday school teacher, deacon, don't give up. Don't quit now. Did you know, I know people right now, the storm came through and hit them. That's the only thing about this glory and this shouting stuff all the time. All the time, when rough times come, you're not anchored good and it'll blow you away. Did you know I know people that used to go to church, work on the bus route, teach Sunday school, sit on the deacon board and work, do all kinds of stuff. And this morning, this, this September Sunday morning, they're not even in church. Their kids are out. Some of them's divorced. And if they had just stayed in and weathered that storm and just hunkered down and just clenched on and held on to the Lord Jesus Christ and anchored themselves in the Word of God, they'd still be in this thing. Listen, you look up here. I'm telling you something this morning. Don't look up here and think, well, preacher, if I had as good as you... You know not what you speak of. Uh, let me confess something to you. I thought about quitting. Everybody has. The only man in the Bible that didn't say it verbally was Paul. And he probably did, but he was human. But all, the, all the prophets, the apostles, some of them actually did quit. Elijah even got suicidal. He said, Lord, why don't you just go ahead and kill me? Take my life. It ain't worth nothing now. You might be at the end of your ropes and feel like there's no, there ain't even a knot to hang on to. Preach, you don't realize I'm going under. But as you're going down, why don't you just reach up and grab a hold of him? I can't help you. I can't pull you back up. But Jesus is reaching down and he's saying this. Don't, don't have such weak faith. I'm right here. Our problem is we do the same thing these disciples did. We try to get it under control ourselves. And then when we do everything, we exhaust every avenue. Then we run to him for help. When we ought to run to Him first. Let's all stand with our heads bowed, eyes closed just for a minute. Would you do something for me this morning? Is there any here this morning? Raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm in a storm right now. God bless you. Hands going up all over the house. Anybody else? Raise your hand and say, Preacher, you wouldn't believe the storm I'm in right now. Right now today. I'm in a storm. I don't know if I'm going to make it. While they sing, you come to this altar and you turn it over to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you know our needs. Meet the needs. Help us to weather the storm. Help us to hunker down and have faith and anchor ourselves in the Word of God. In your name we pray while they sing.